Hi, everyone. Welcome to our podcast, Musicality. In this show, we dive into the lives of composers. I'm your host, Sarah. And I'm Joycelyn. And today, keeping in the mood of Valentine's Day, we will be learning about Cecile Chaminade and her famous piece, Concertino for Flute and Orchestra. Did I say her name right? Yeah, Chaminade. Chaminade. I don't speak French, but I know that. I kind of have to as a flute player. (laughs) Okay, you see, well, I should as a saxophone player, but like in the last two months, I haven't learned any French. And like when I was reading our notes, my brain kept turning her name into like lemonade, but like lemonade. Like chamonade. Chamonade. Right. And I was like, that's not. It's actually chamind. Chamonide. Chamonide. Chamind. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What am I talking about? Let me stop. No, I feel the same way. (laughs) I don't speak French. Y'all know I have beef with this language. So. (laughs) Wait, I thought it was German you had beef with. No, I have more beef with France. Because you remember the Debussy episode? I was like, I can't say any of this stuff. Debussy. Like, my mouth will not form the words. I'm trying, yeah. but it just won't do it. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyways, guys, what's up? We're back. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, like, better than ever, but, like. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly back. back. Certainly we're back. I would say we're better. I'm better. Yeah. You know, Um, still busy as always, but, you know, the end of uh, fall semester, it got a little rough. (laughs) 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 It was a lot going on. And then we had the holidays and even more things happening. So we decided to take a little step back, you know, for our mental health, for um, just the sake of like, gathering where it is we're trying to go as well Mm -hmm. um so even though we haven't came out with any episodes we have been thinking about the podcast i want you to know we think about you guys like every week (laughs) and we we text back and forth and then we'll never do anything (laughs) and then we'll text back and forth again (laughs) it's like oh with the pod we should do this we should do this and and then then we'll just get stagnant like so i mean we've been taking notes this whole time we have that's the thing like we've been doing research we've been planning we've been plotting you know but as far as sitting down to record yeah (laughs) it was like a two-week break and then it turned into like a two-month hiatus (laughs) it was like trying to get back into it um we were busy we were we okay we were okay Part of it can be on me because we were going to start in January and then I got the coronavirus and then we couldn't report. Yep. yep. I mean, we could have, but I would have looked like crap. It was genuinely like one thing after the other. Cause like, I remember like, cause my computer was broken. Then you oh got yeah. COVID, and then I was like out of town. Like it was just, it was really hard for us to sit down and try to find a time to even record. But we had the idea. We had the, we had the, we had the idea. We just needed the platform. You know exactly. I mean? exactly. Um, but for here, from here on out, we're only going to be doing one episode a month. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But yeah. like, we work full time. <laughs> it's I... really hard to research this much and like be cranking out two episodes a month. <laughs> so for the sake of quality, we would we don't want to sacrifice quality. So we're just going to sacrifice quantity. So we'll be coming back to one a month but there'll be really 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 good episodes and they will be on time as well so the one tuned. episode that we like just did not upload and oh, like- i thought <laughs> i hit upload and i was like oh my gosh it's still not up and i literally had everything uploaded it just didn't <sighs> actually publish i was so mad at myself but I, I went to like do something and i was like i think it was something with the youtube video and then i was yeah. like i texted you and i'm like hey I don't think it uploaded and you're like yeah I did and I'm like yes. <laughs> and I, I thought it was because I was on school wi-fi because I was like yeah <laughs> I think it was after that episode that we took the hiatus <laughs> yeah I was like, like, like you know what let's uh, let's pause for a second yeah um, but anyways now we're back and certainly refreshed I will say and ready to get going so yeah you want to take us away Sarah and get us started off with Shamanat <laughs> Yeah, so just a quick bio about Chaminade. She was born in 1857 in Paris, died in 1944 in Monte Carlo. 
She took early piano lessons from her mom, but her dad banned her from enrolling in a conservatory, so she had to take secret private lessons with Benjamin Goddard and Antoine Marmontel. She had her public debut as a pianist at the age of 18, and in 1913, she became the first female composer to be granted admission to Order of the Legion of Honor, which is like a pretty big deal. After her debut, she toured Germany and England, and she became a huge hit, and Queen Victoria was such a huge fangirl that she even awarded her the Jubilee Medal. She ended up being super popular in the U.S. too, and she toured from 1908 to 1909, but her fame was due to the popularity of her smaller works. Do you want me to keep going? Yeah, or do I, you can want to keep going? I, could, I could pick up. Yeah, okay. she was definitely doing her thing. Um, She had 200 solo piano pieces and 125 melodies for solo voice, and total, she had approximately 400 compositions. <laughs> people composing that much of music like i just don't get it i cannot wrap my head around that like i feel like 400 i feel, I feel like there's just there wasn't as much to do like that's fair because now you can be like an influencer composer you can be just like writing for fun you could just be like busking on the streets like what, yeah. whatever your thing is i just think that's insane like i can i don't think i had 400 of anything like 400 ideas i might i might have 400 ideas but they're all over the place scattered like yeah you know, i was just thinking about how i can remodel my bedroom mm -hmm. <clears throat> and i won't because i'm lazy but like <laughs> lots of ideas about that <laughs> i'm like what if i move the bed to that wall well, I'm thinking about getting some new furniture because, like, my friend, I'm not about to get into my furniture. <laughs> like, <laughs> furniture is older than I am. Like, I, I need some new, I need some new stuff. Like, it is, I can't do it no more. Yeah. Anyways, though, back to Sean and I. So, her pieces were considered ideal for publication as these genres were thought to be, quote, within a woman's sphere. Whatever that means. Weird. This appeals to women. I'm not sure. Um, but the target audience for these smaller works were young women. And Ambroise Thomas, a contemporary of Chaminade, quoted, quote, this is not a woman who composes, but a composer who happens to be a woman. I feel and like that just, quote, that quote doesn't stand up today. It at the doesn't, time, at like, the time it would have been a slay. But now it's kind of like, no, she was she was a woman who composes. Like, are you saying a woman who composes is less than a composer who has been to be a woman? Like, I don't. Mm -hmm. It was an interesting quote because it's from the the book that we've used for other things too, but it's one that I got while we were both in grad school called "From Convent to Concert Hall," and it's just like this large anthology about female composers. And I thought that was a really interesting quote, be coming from another female composer, because I'm like. You're really going against your own kind here, aren't you? Because... But I guess it's like one of those things where we really can't look at it through the lens That's... of today. Because if somebody said that most to me, like, you're not just a woman who plays the flute. You're a flute player who's a woman. <laughs> it's Both like one of these th are true. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, what are you trying to say? It's, it's like one of those things that almost sounds like a compliment. And then you listen to it and you're like. That's a you really think problem. about it it's like you know you look really good for xyz and like right it's like you look really that? pretty for someone who wears glasses and you're like what do you mean by that right i want to know what she <laughs> thought about that if they were really like that tight you know what i mean but i guess like really do thinking about it in that lens i feel like they're probably thinking like no she's a composer like she's a legit composer yeah she's just a woman versus like if it's somebody that just does it as a pastime or something like that like I could kind of see maybe it being good like mm -hmm. if they consider women composing like a pastime like just for funsies yeah. not like an actual career or anything mm -hmm. maybe but like I don't know like, if somebody <laughs> said that must be today I'd be like well especially to be like a contemporary because According to the book, it's like they they knew each other pretty well. Yeah. Like, if I found out that one of my besties said that about me, I'd be like, what? She said not what? A woman that is a composer. She's a composer that's a woman. 
either way, I guess it's a compliment because you know, like she's good enough to be considered yeah. with all the other white men. So <laughs> there you go. And good on you, Shamanad, for that. <laughs> But <clears throat> the point of this episode, mm. thanks for that nice background, Sarah, is her famous work, Concertino, which as a flutist, any flutist is going to know this piece front, back, side to side, backwards in your sleep, all of these things, because it's like the standard. And not only is it the standard, it's the one that's the prettiest. Like, I always think Mozart's concerto in G is like the standard, but Shamanad mm. is so pretty. Like it's beautiful. And it it's is. kind of deceiving because the first five, ten measures, it's this nice, beautiful melody. And the next thing you know, it's like bam. Like it's just like runs galore and just technique exercise for the rest of the piece. And yeah, it's a it's a but it's a really fun one. It's really beautiful. And it was originally written for flute and orchestra, um, but it's now more frequently performed with piano. Yeah, it was so pretty. Like I listened to it last night as my first, like I, cause we had been talking about this piece, talking about it. And then I finally listened to it. And I had that exact reaction where it was like, this is so beautiful. Like I was just sitting there like vibing and then it just hit and it was, and I was like, whoa very impressive very much a virtuosic Had. piece and would be a great concerto to perform with uh, a full ensemble so for sure my, my brain blew up <laughs> but she she wrote it in 1902 for the paris conservatory's annual concourse competition and it was written presumably presumably as an examination piece for flute students just to like tech to uh test certain techniques certain skills things like that because it is really really like textbook I would say textbook flute patterns and things like that um and it was also dedicated to Paul Taffanel who's a huge name if not like one of the biggest names certainly one of the biggest flute educators and flute teachers in the world along with Gobert who wrote this whole um flute warm-up daily exercise technique book Taffanel and Gobert every flutist that is like really serious about flu being a flutist <laughs> knows about it um and play that stuff daily i mean it's literally daily exercise <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so i think that's really cool that she wrote it and dedicated it to this huge flute educator with that like all a whole bunch of wonderful flutists came from studying with him and so on and they studied with this person and it's just like continued on to present day so I think that's really cool. According to legend, Shamanon wrote this piece for an ex-lover who played the flute. Her goal was to make it so difficult that he would mess up in performance and embarrass himself. Fortunately for Shamanad, he performed it well and the audience loved it, leading to its continued popularity. I just think that's funny. Like, you know, if I already had to write a piece and that just so happened to happen to me, mm-hmm. I could see me doing something like that. Like if I was already composing a piece for this instrument, that's like, true. You know what? I'm gonna make it really hard so you make a fool of yourself. Yeah. I feel like that could have also been embarrassing though, because it's like, like she planned for him to mess up. Like she was plotting and like scheming and stuff, and then he gets up there and just slays, and she's like, "Okay, yeah." I would still be mad, but I'm like. She probably made a lot of money off of it so it's like you know what i guess it's a win-win here like there was no <laughs> loses to that situation it was either she gets revenge or she gets money like i'm okay with both of yeah <laughs> because when i was thinking i was like earlier i was thinking about the piece and i was like is that a diss track like does a diss track count like that is not a diss track if you write it for an ex to play no a diss track is where you like at somebody like where you're like mm. hey you shut your face because of this like yeah it's not you writing a piece for someone to perform you see like i no, because it because i was thinking i'm like is that like the original diss track then i was like i don't think it counts because he didn't like she didn't write it and then like at him okay what could have been a diss track is if she like wrote it and then started dating another flutist and then, oh and then had him perform it and you're like yeah <laughs> yeah i feel like that would be the closest thing to like a diss track in this scenario but 
Also, no, I don't think it's a diss track. <laughs> Not really, because I mean, because it was really a win win. <laughs> it was a win win. Like he did a good job, even though she tried to make it so hard. I I wonder though. I wonder if no she kind of held back though. Because, but apparently, I was reading somewhere else where like he was like like they were together, but then he just like left her and married this other woman. Like it was like very sudden and very serious, very fast. So I was just like, you know, forget the flute piece. Like, right. forget that. Like, like, <laughs> burn his house down. What are you doing? No, I do not condone violence, of course. <laughs> like, no, but it's like that TikTok sound where it's like, he's just a guy. Get him with your car. Literally. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Don't we're, do that. Write that Don't one do down. That. Write that I'm one down. down That's gonna be the shamanad TikTok. Do that. That's our disclaimer. Don't actually. No. A guy's not house down. Actually, it's just if a. That happens, and a guy leaves you for another woman. Just let him go, because you would have been miserable anyways. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to Judge Toller. <laughs> Yeah, I love divorce court. It is so bad. Like some of the like it, I'm sure it's staged, but some yeah. of the stuff people go on there and say, and they're like, Yeah, but we're still trying to save this relationship. Why? It's, Why are you trying to save this relationship? It's showing up on my TikTok feed a lot lately, and I'm like, my god, it'll be little clips of it. And I get so invested right off the bat. I'm just like, ooh. Genuinely, I watch all the episodes on YouTube. Anytime there's a new episode, Ooh. I have to watch it. Like, I need to look I, at YouTube. Yeah, girl, it's got the full episodes. And they got like a whole yeah. bunch of them from Judge Maybelline to Judge Star. Like they got all of them <laughs> on there. So I would definitely visit YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the tea about what that surrounds concertino and i get it like shamanon's like how dare you and i think the real lesson here is just don't date a male flute player <laughs> just don't do it <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i've ever met one <laughs> i'm like you know what you did great <laughs> <laughs> we have to edit that out <laughs> No, but like, why is it facts? <laughs> facts, no printer. Like, it's it's real. Like, guys who play the flute, I just, that's yeah. very far from my type. That's all. <laughs> very far. Very, very, very far from my type. <clears throat> but Shamanad isn't the only composer with misfortune when it comes to love. That we've actually talked about. We've coupled, covered a couple of composers. <clears throat> um, that had some not so great luck <laughs> <laughs> to say the least yeah yeah um Berlioz who I still can't say that man's name Berlioz 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 Burr. <laughs> Berlioz. I would say Berlioz but that is not mm. correct Berlioz it's the z that's throwing me Berlioz Ber Berlioz Berlioz yeah but it's a Z. I mean, it can sound kind of like an S, but nah. barely O's. I haven't heard barely O's. I well, way. actually, <laughs> maybe I have. Barely O's. They I don't speak. know. Mm. I don't speak whatever he's from. France. Is he from he's French? We got to go back and listen to our own podcast. I know. I got to go back and learn because I don't remember. But <laughs> no, do you remember Classic FM had just posted this a few days ago? Yeah. Where he basically threatened to kill himself so this lady would marry him. I'm like, sir. It's crazy. Classic yeah. FM, they're always just a little bit behind our episodes. They're just a little behind us. That's all. I think we they're. About it first. <laughs> we. Mm -hmm. And then also Beethoven, who. Didn't Beethoven, he like proposed to someone three times, right? Like three different yeah. people and then they... We were so focused on the coffee that episode, but yeah, yeah. he did propose like a thousand times. times. He proposed a lot and they were like, no. <laughs> so poor, poor Beethoven. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then Granger, I mean, his mama just wouldn't let him love nobody other than her, so... That one had a lot of a lot of stuff to unpack. 
Yeah. A lot of them is fortunate. He found his lady. He found his his one true love. He's pookie. So that's good for Granger, you know? Yeah. And then there was freaking Debussy, who <laughs> honestly, if I think about Debussy too much, it the, makes me upset. Like, it actually makes me upset. It's like now I can never listen to anything by DBC without thinking about it. Literally, like I'll like l- like DBC will pop up on my playlist, and I'm like, this man's for the streets. Like <laughs> he was for the streets. I'm like, and if anyone doesn't know, I have to inform them. I don't care where we are. You will learn today about how DBC was for the streets. <laughs> that was. I think that's been the one episode so far that like has really shaken me to my core because I yeah. was like. Wow, I didn't know that. And now that I do know that, how do I go back? Yeah, that episode was wild. So just just watch the WC episode. If you don't do anything else, watch that one. Because <laughs> yeah. it's a it's a wild ride. Um, but yeah, so I guess like composers and love don't necessarily go hand in hand. As far as who we've talked about on the show, we that was unintentional. Like it was a little intentional for this episode because it's like February. But yeah. You know, for the most part, it was unintentional. Oh my gosh, girl, you know what I just thought about? What? It's literally Black History Month. Mm-hmm. Well, our last episode was Florence Price. That's true. So, that, see. Happy Black History Month, everybody. <laughs> no we have plenty of black Mm -hmm. composers and artists on the list like we will get to them I just thought about that well I mean but we could talk about her what that was like November that was our last episode yeah so that was November we'll 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 circle back (laughs) for sure I'm just gonna circle back to that later um, like we're gonna like the thing with our podcast is like we're gonna talk about so many different composers that it's like it'll be fine we'll yeah. circle back it'll be okay circle back. but anyways that's concertino um moving on now to the rest of the music by shamanade um it was really hard for me to not choose to talk about concertino but we literally already talked about it so i'm gonna choose a another piece and this piece I actually discovered while I was doing my flute um comprehensive exams for grad school and I came up with this idea to do an all-woman concert and I'm not gonna tell you the name because I feel like somebody will steal it from me and I don't I don't want that to happen because I I thought of it first (laughs) I'm (laughs) keeping the name of this concert but one of the pieces I had on there was a shamanade and it wasn't concertino it was called serenade ah uh, a toys mm. how do i do with that which means serenade to the stars and it's uh. about a five minute piece for flute and piano and it's just like so french like it's so representative of france french flute music from the time um with Taffanel at the Paris Conservatory. Like, it just sounds like any other flute piece I've played. And I eat it up every time. That's the thing. Anytime I play a flute piece from, like, the French school, I'm going to eat it up. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, this one was no different. Um, but it was composed in 1898. So this is pr- a precursor to Chaminade. And it's just easy listening. Like, it's very beautiful, very serene, and mm-hmm. just... And short. I like short pieces. It's five minutes. That's that's long enough, you know? <laughs> um, so that'll be on the playlist if you guys want to give that one a listen. All right, Sarah. Yeah. I, so I listened to her Kontrastuck in C-sharp minor for Opus 40, and it was premiered in 1888, so it became a little bit before the Concertino. And, like, it's interesting because the the piece has been compared to like the likes of Liszt and Wagner, mm-hmm. but anyway, but like I can I can see where the likeness comes from because the piece it's it's a concert piece and so like piano is the solo instrument versus the orchestra, but even her orchestration is so woodwind heavy that like I love it. It's just it's so lush and the piano is just like beautiful and it it honestly. It kind of reminds me of like Shostakovich's piano concertos, mm-hmm. even though he's like way, well, not too much later, like several years later, but yeah. it's just, 
that like romantic style that's just so pretty and it's the blending of piano and orchestra even though it's like it's a solo instrument it's supposed to be the at the forefront they just blend so well together mm -hmm. um and yeah it's it's really pretty I like the way that the piece too I mean it's like 15 minutes long but it goes by so fast because she keeps you interested with the theme it's not just like you're bored out of your mind the whole time like waiting for it to be over it's like she takes the same theme and just keeps evolving it throughout the piece beautiful Wonderful. beautiful I'm a fan of Shamanad yes actually it's like because I I highly doubt that there is anything for saxophone by her I highly doubt it but her music would sound so pretty yeah, I liked how you mentioned like how she wrote a lot for woodwinds with her piano um work. And honestly, like I just feel like I mean, I'm super biased here, right? Like we're super biased. But woodwinds just have such a nice pure timbre, especially mm -hmm. when they play in tune, like Yeah. It's just ethereal to me. Like well, it's, Right. It's like it's also very reminiscent of like more of a pastoral type theme where it's yes. like nature. it's just I don't it feels more at one with the earth as a yes. wood. I'm like yes yeah because like woodwind choir oh yeah yes. well because the concert shook is like it's compared to Wagner which I can see in terms of like the way that the brass play in that piece it's just it's very bombastic but then once they finally get out of the way you hear like flutes in the back and they're just I'm like Oh my gosh. It's just, it's so pretty. Yeah. Once the brass get out of the way. Of yeah, course. brass, shut up. <laughs> I was just kidding. We love our brass friends, but you know, time and place, time and place. Time and We've place. been gone for like two months. So like. <laughs> Already back on the energy. No, right. what was it like? <clears throat> our old grad school made this video about like when you sit in front of the trumpets and everyone's just like. <laughs> And honestly, that pretty much checks out. Like when brass is blasting, I'm just like. Yeah, whenever I'm in front of brass, I just kind of disassociate a little bit. Earplugs in. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but super biased. But I just think woodwinds are so. It's just They're just so here when it comes woodwinds to Woodwinds on top. And I just think we're more versatile. Like, we really can do it all. We can do the bombastic stuff, you know, like, add to the effect and flavor. But also, yeah. like, we can create serenity. And I love that, too, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and much easier to tune than a string because strings are beautiful in numbers to me. Like, a huge string section, yeah. like, playing in unison is beautiful. But it's got to be in tune. <laughs> like, it's just sense. out of the I can't. I can't. Mm -hmm so much respect for string musicians because it's yeah. terrible to tune like it's so much easier to tune a woodwind like I just mm. oh yeah it's like if you're just a little off you're done well and then like the string will snap like I keep I keep seeing these videos on TikTok where like string players like they're it just snaps on stage and I'm like nah see my saxophone doesn't do that like nah. and if I'm like not exactly on top of the note on the flute like it's just like it's not going to come out it's not going to be just like super sharp or super flat it's going to be you know what I mean like it takes mm -hmm. a lot more if my flute like I have my head joint where I need it to be to be out of tune like it's going to take a lot more than that or it's easier for me to make the adjustment like you know with my air or whatever yeah right like changing things but then then there's less of us too so you know if we're all just more in tune with it yeah versus like you have a string section of like 50 people then all 50 people have to be right there versus like six for a woodwind section so. and see that's already stressful enough right <laughs> like six woodwind so. <clears throat> everything is a solo actually <laughs> i'm a soloist in this one yeah, i mean you basically are woodwinds are yeah. soloists yeah. that's why they make the big bucks <laughs> um but yeah, so that's our episode for Valentine's Day. That is going to come up out after Valentine's Day, but it's the month of love. Also Black <laughs> History Month. Yes. So happy Black History Month, folks. And have a good rest of your month. And continue out through the semester, almost since winter break, spring break, whatever it's supposed to be. I don't know. I'm not in school no more. So. <laughs> like, all right, so peace.
you guys next time. Bye. Bye.